Wi-Fi devices like cell phones can leak a lot of data, and Wireshark can suck up a lot of this information. Today, we'll use Jupyter Notebooks to derive insights about this Wi-Fi data on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Wireshark is a program for capturing wireless data, especially for Wi-Fi networks, and it's an incredibly useful tool for studying re wireless relationships for even finding information like perhaps the wireless network a device has connected to before. Now we can derive this sort of information in a number of different ways, and it's useful because if we create a fake network with that network name in it, then the device that's joined a network with the same name before will instantly connect to it, provided that there's no password involved. Now, I ran an experiment to see if I could create a bunch of different fake networks that don't require a password, and see if nearby devices would jump in and try to connect to them, provided that they recognize that network. I picked about 40 different fake networks, and in a crowded subway train, basically unleashed them and allowed devices to respond, while measuring on Wireshark all of the different packets that had sended what are called directed probe frames, or packets that were sent directly to my device, rather than just asking if there were any Wi-Fi networks nearby. I exported this as a CSV file, and today we're going to learn how to analyze this sort of information by bringing it into Jupyter Notebooks, which is a Python-based analysis suite which also allows us to export and share this data. In order to follow along, you'll just need Python 3, which is easy to download and cross-platform, and Wireshark. Once you have that, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description in case you get stuck. Once you have Wireshark and Python installed, then we can begin. Today, we're going to jump into some data analysis with Jupyter Notebooks, but this is going to be a two-parter because the first thing we need to do is actually get the data we want out of Wireshark. Now, Wireshark has its own way of analyzing stuff, and some of those are perfectly fine. But what we want to do is go into Wireshark, and this is a capture that I recorded on a Redline train. And what we're particularly interested in, uh, in this case, is all the different devices that are responding to my fake networks. Now, one thing that all my fake networks have in common is that they start uh, with the same prefix. So basically, what I'm going to do is look for uh, packets where something is sending out a bunch of beacon frames, and hopefully I'll be able to find one that matches. There we go. All right, so all of these will have, uh, this is one of my fake networks, and using Spacekin's Beacon Spammer, I can see that the source address is always gonna start with 6C3F23. So we're gonna go ahead and right mouse click, apply as filter and select it. And then now it's saying WLAN source address equals this exact one, and it'll scan in Wireshark, and this is quite a big capture, so in the end we'll probably get some percentage of packets that were from this one particular fake network. Well, this is interesting, we're actually only wanting to calculate the first three, so we can say that it's going to be from zero to three, and then we can get rid of the rest of uh, this hexadecimal and just keep this. Let's run this. And now this should just match to the first three hexadecimal, hexadecimal um, uh, characters in the MAC address. This will run again. And now effectively what we're doing with this filter is saying, hey, anything that matches this, uh, any packet that is being sent uh, from this uh, MAC address range, which is anything with just this first half, I want to include this. And if we click around through here, we can see uh, TWC Wi-Fi, USC Guest Wi-Fi. So that's great. We've created a capture filter now, and this these are all the beacon frames that are being broadcast. Now, that's not what we want. Instead, we want every single packet that's being directed towards these fake networks. But because we already have a perfectly good filter for basically singling out our fake networks, we can just change this to DA, destination address. Now we're filtering for all the different packets where the destination address is our fake network, meaning we're basically capturing every single time a nearby network device has attempted to connect to our fake network or otherwise interacted with it. You can see after running this, this is about 2.2%. 
a substantial reduction from the overall uh, number that we were dealing with before. So this is a much more manageable data set. Once we have everything we want, we can go ahead and click on File, Export Specified uh, Packet Dissections as CSV. And we can go ahead and save this somewhere where we can work with it. In my case, I will go to the desktop. So this will be null by sample.csv. We'll save that. And as soon as this is exported, that is the first step. We've gotten our data out of Wireshark, and the next step will be to put it into uh, Jupyter Notebooks so we can start analyzing it and doing something more interesting. Now, first we'll start in a browser, and you can go to jupyter.org to learn more about this project, but it is a fantastic way for you to take this data and start cutting into it and also share it with other people. So in order to install it, you can just click on install and you'll see the instructions, but in general, you can use pip install Jupyter Lab, and this will go ahead and install everything you need. Now to start a Jupyter Notebooks tab, what you'll do is just type uh, Jupyter Notebooks. And this should automatically start the web interface which will redirect you to a tab with all of your different notebooks. And in our case, we're going to click on new and Python three. Now to follow along with our formulas, you can go to my repository where I've been storing this research, github.com slash gakar slash research. Now here you can find all the various uh, ways that I've broken down this data, as well as the data file in case you want to follow along. Now, there's also a data cleaner uh, function that my friend just wrote, uh, one of our production assistants, Nicholas, but uh, we're not going to use that in this particular guide because that is a little bit further down the pipeline and not all the way finished. So let's go ahead and learn what we can do uh, by first taking a look at different ways we can analyze and import this file. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually import this. So I'm going to copy this code right here and drop it into our new notebook. I'm going to paste this here. And basically what we're doing is we're importing an analysis tool called Pandas, which will allow us to import the CSV file as a data frame, which we'll be able to manipulate more easily. We will import from matplotlib pyplot as PLT, and we'll, we're going to be referring to Pandas as PD and matplotlib uh, as PLT. And then we're going to be, in this case, I'm just calling it uh, wireless data, WD, but you can name this variable anything you want. You really want. That will be our data frame. And we're saying we're setting that equal to pd.read, so pandas.read underscore CSV. And the read underscore CSV library allows us to read in various CSV files, but not just CSV files. So if you have a maybe tab separated file instead, where it uses tabs instead of commas, you can simply put a tab in the delimiter uh, argument here. And then with the encoding, I put in Latin one to prevent any confusion, because if you don't add this, sometimes it won't know what sort of encoding the file is in and it will get confused. Now the header file is where you store the index data, basically the name for all of the columns underneath it. And if this isn't on the default row of zero, then you can input the row here that it's actually on, which will definitely help, help you out if you find some data that has a row that's not indexed properly. Now, finally, we're going to run wd.sample, which is taking our newly created variable, our data frame, and saying we want to sample the first 10, or actually just sample 10 random entries. So in this case, I'm going to remove this one right here, and instead, we're going to use the one that we just created. So let's see, what did we name that? That's going to be null byte sample, and I'll name that dot CSV. And we'll put that here. So in order to check to see if this works, we'll just hit run. And there we go. We have a bunch of, well, 10 specifically different samples of data from our data set. We can now start to see all the various information about this uh, this capture, including the source, destination, protocol, length, channel, frequency, all this great stuff. And we can use this to start to drill down into the data to start looking at things like type versus subtype, which uh, destinations were the most popular, and other sorts of things. So let's follow this down a little bit further and see what we can do. 
Now, if you want to take a look at the actual data frame, we can input the following command WD, which is our variable, and then iLock, and then just any random number. And effect effectively, we're saying we want to see the data from this row um, as a single data frame. Uh, so this is going as a single frame of data. So this is going to be all the various uh, different columns kind of just in a self-contained package so we can see what's inside any random sample. So if you need to do a sample, you can use this method to just pull out one example and see what's inside. Uh, maybe if uh, you just wanna get, I don't know, an understanding of what's inside each piece of data. So next up, let's actually plot some stuff. And we're going to plot a couple things across time, which is a fairly easy thing to do, but we'll need to set some stuff up first. Now, first, we're going to define the parameters of the figure we're going to draw, which we're just going to use uh, 20 by 10, but you can adjust this to fit the size of your screen however you want. Next, we're going to determine the variable we want to track. And if we want to know the variable names, well, here they are right here. So if I want to plot time, which is the time index from our Wireshark capture, against transmitter address, which is basically the uh, transmitter address that has been captured in a packet, we can see which transmitter addresses we're transmitting over time. Now, if we want to label this, well, first we can add tac o, which creates kind of a scatter plot rather than the standard way of graphing this, which is a line graph, and then we can define the color as dark green. We can make the plot title clients connecting to fake networks over time, because that's what we're revealing, and then we can plot the X label as time, uh, and the Y label as real clients sending directed packets to fake networks. Now when we plot this, what we'll see is a graph that shows us uh, fake networks that are being connected to over time. Now if we want to just flip this, we can basically copy the same code. And it's important to note that how we're accessing, accessing the data here is we're saying within the wireless data variable we created, we want to select the index in the uh, the column title in these uh, quotations here. So we can access any of these variables that we want to plot. We can do transmitter address, destination address, data rate, really whatever we want to keep track of. So it's an important thing when working with data frames to realize that you can just access any particular one by putting in the name of the column that you want to access here. So in this one, we just swap out transmitter address with destination address. We keep everything else mostly the same except changing it to dark blue. And then we'll need to change this because it's displaying different information. So in this case, we are showing fake networks broadcast by the beacon spammer uh, receiving directed packets. So let's, let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Okay. We can see that there are different devices transmitting at different times. For the fake networks being broadcasted, we can see that certain ones are getting hits in a pretty linear fashion. Whereas for the clients connecting to fake networks over time, the time scale looks a little bit different and you have different devices kind of peaking up and starting to react at different times. Now we can move on a little further to learn more about our data by plotting something really interesting. The unique fingerprint that every device creates by reacting to different fake networks with the networks that are stored inside of it in its preferred network list. And what I mean by that is if you connect to a Wi-Fi network and you don't go through and specifically delete that out of this preferred network list in your phone, it will always attempt to reconnect to that network when it sees it. Now what we're going to do in this figure, which we're plotting at a size of 25 by 10, is the destination address versus the transmitter address. And by using the dot string method with a minus five, we're only comparing the first five characters in this string. So we're basically checking to make sure that this is a fake network uh, and checking to make sure that this is a unique uh, address. And we're comparing the two to see, uh, oh, and actually this is also, sorry, this is how we're plotting this. Uh, so we only want to show a, a little bit of um, the MAC address, otherwise it's going to get very confusing. So when we're plotting this, we're also only showing a small part. So when I run this, it'll make a little bit more sense. Let's go ahead and run the chart and I'll explain exactly what this is doing. Now here you can see we're just taking a, a small portion of the overall um, MAC address for this access because if we use the whole thing, uh, we can see we're only using five per each. So we only see four total plus the colon in between. So this is a way that we can show our data without having an overwhelming amount of text in the X or Y axis. So here we're just using the dot string method and then subtract and doing minus five, which means we're looking at the last five characters of the MAC address because the first will be um, just 
all the same and it wouldn't really give us that much information, at least on the destination side. All right, so last time, what this is showing is on the left side, we see real devices, and these are reacting to fake networks, which are on the bottom side. So on the X axis, we have these fake networks, and we can very easily see which ones are the most popular and which ones make the most devices react to them. So if I'm a hacker and I want to use this to determine, hey, which uh, fake network should I create here? then this is some really good information because it allows me to quickly identify in any given area which fake networks will attract the most devices automatically connecting. Conversely, I can create a unique fingerprint for every single one of these real devices by which of the fake networks they've reacted to. Conversely, I can create a profile for every single one of these real devices by looking at the fingerprint of all the fake networks they've created, they've connected to. If I wanted to make them reveal their real MAC address or determine if this really was the same device, I could simply create all of these fake networks that they've reacted to, and if they react to them, then it's pretty likely that I'm dealing with the same device, even if they've somehow spoofed their MAC address. This is just one of the ways we can use pandas to drill, uh, pandas and uh, Jupyter notebooks to drill into this information and learn more about the devices behind the wireless broadcast that we're listening in on. This was recorded in a public space, but of course make sure that you're not revealing wireless information from inside your house or anywhere that you wouldn't want people to know where you were, because a lot of this information could lead back to the location where it was recorded, and that's probably not a good idea for your own privacy if you're doing this kind of work. Now if you want to follow along, you can also check out the GitHub repository to see some of the other formulas that there are, because we can also do things like break this down by the manu manufacturer and some other things that are only made possible by first cleaning the data a little further. Jupyter Notebooks is a free and easy way of analyzing wireless data. And even though Wireshark has its own capability for analyzing wireless data, it's easy to export CSV files, import them into Jupyter, and slice and dice them however you want. In addition, it's super easy to share these files, because you can simply upload them to GitHub, and it natively renders the default file format for Jupyter Notebooks. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any problems, check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.